IPv4 VOSM. This is the Module 4 Lecture 5. I'm Professor Dwight Hughes for the NTech 103 IP subnetting course. We're going to look at standard subnetting, which we've been doing in class and should be pretty good at it, and then VOSM subnetting, which starts out the same way as standard subnetting and uses the same tools. Standard subnetting. If we had an assigned network, like let's take this class C network here and some user requirements, you may not be used to seeing the user requirements presented in this way. Normally, we've had the user requirements written down for us. This is just a diagram where you have to find how many subnets. There's three of them. So I would need three subnets and then I have to find the largest group of hosts since I'm building all of my subnets the same size I need to have a size that could accommodate the largest group so it looks like sales with 35 so we would need to accommodate 35 hosts in each of three subnets so now we have the same user requirements and the same assigned network that we had when we had done standard subnetting in previous weeks. We usually add a slash 24 because that's the classable mask and then we use finger math to convert our user requirements into binary and binary zoom is where we put all that information so we've binary zoomed our network ID the classable mask of slash 24 and then use the user requirements and finger math to create the slash 26, our custom subnet mask. So we'll borrow two bits, leaving six host bits remaining for our usable hosts. We then can use scratch pad and dial in and anding. And because this is a review, I'm not going to draw all those out for you, but using scratch pad, I can find the first, second, third, and fourth subnet. Recall that we borrowed two bits for our subnets because we need three subnets for the network and we have to borrow in groups of two. So we do have four subnets and I want to find the network ID for each of them. And so I go ahead and do that using Scratchpad and you can see in red here where the bits would change using dial in and anding. I can put those bits into the binary zoom and then get those bits back out again and convert those into the decimal network IDs for my network. And I can go ahead and assign one to sales and marketing and my WAN and I have one left over or 25% of my network. Hosts are unused and available for future use. Not bad. This is a graphical way that we can show what we just did. And this is going to be helpful as we start working with VLSM. So we started with a box, a, a network, an assigned network. And if we conceptualize that as the blue box on the left of your screen, there's its network ID, the classable mask. So it would have host addresses 0 through 255. So the 0 is the network ID and the 255 is the broadcast. And all we did is split that box into four sections. like that. So we've got 0 through 63, 64 to 127, 128 to 191, and 192 to 255. Those again are the network IDs and the broadcasts for each of our subnets. Notice that I've also written the subnets out for you in the traditional way and provided a table which we had created through the anding and the dial-in process on the previous slide. So we're just looking at this as little blue boxes. Just a clever way to visualize what we've just done. Let's try to apply this now to VLSM subnetting. VLSM subnetting is essentially subnetting a subnet. So round one, the first subnetting, will look identical to classical standard subnetting. We're just going to take our network, find the user requirements, and subnet as usual. 
So we start with the same network scenario. We determine our user requirements, which will be the same. In this case, I'm only interested in the hosts. Notice previously I calculated the subnets and the hosts. Now what I'm trying to do is build best fit containers, so I want to start working from my largest host group to my smallest. So I will need to accommodate 35 usable hosts. So I would do the same finger math as we did before in the same binary zoom, and I would come up with the same custom mask of slash 26. I could do the same anding and the same dial in and come up with the same answers. Notice, however, here I'm only assigning the first of my four subnets for that largest group sales. I'm going to leave the other three unused right now and it would look something like this if I drew it out the same way that we did the standard subnetting. Let's move to round two. In round two, we'll subnet a subnet. So starting from where we left off, notice that we already took the blue box on the left and subnetted it into four boxes and the first one went to sales. Now we're going to take the second of our subnets, that would be 192.22.264, and we'll go ahead and subnet it. So if we take that second box and we refer to our network topology, we can see that the second largest subnet that we need to accommodate will be the marketing with 10 hosts. So we're going to go back through finger math and binary zoom, but we'll be using this network, the subnet, as our assigned network. That's the only difference with VLSM, is we're now starting with our assigned network is actually one of the four subnets we created. So we calculate our user requirements, and for 10 usable hosts, I will need to leave four host bits. So I start with my assigned network, draw that out in the binary zoom, and then I find that my custom mask will be a slash 28. So I go ahead and use anding and dial in, and I can calculate the four subnets of this subnet. So I've created four new subnets. And I can assign the first of those to the marketing department. And notice I'll leave the others unused. And it would look something like this. If you had taken the second subnet from round one and subnetted it into four subnets and used the first for marketing. Just a graphical way to track what we're doing. Let's go to round three. So we started with the blue box on the left and we subnetted that into four subnets assigning the first to sales. We took the second of those subnets and subnetted it into four additional subnets that exist inside that second subnet of our assigned network. So we're now going to the, take the second of those subnetted subnets, and that would be network ID 192.22.280-28, and we'll go ahead and subnet it. So it would look something like this. Using our network topology, I would find the next largest container, and that's going to be my WAN, my wireless area network. By the way, if you ever have a tie where you have more than one area of your network that is the same size, always work top to bottom, left to right. Exactly the way that we would read a, um, a page in English, right? The way you would read a book, a page in a book, a newspaper, so top to bottom, left to right. In this case, there's no ties. So we go ahead and use this container. And so that's gonna be our starting point. Right? Our starting assigned network will be the subnet of a subnet, which is, as I mentioned earlier, 192.22.280 slash 28. We only need two usable hosts. We would do the finger math using the user requirements of two usable hosts, and we would take our network ID and do a binary zoom 
and take our starting mask of slash 28. And the finger math helps us create our new custom mask of slash 30, which is a best fit for the host requirements. We could use anding and dial in and scratch pad and figure out what subnets we've created. And there's the network IDs for them and we'll assign the first of those to our WAN. And it would look something like this. Let's review. We started with the box on the left. We subnoted into four subnets. We took the first of these and assigned it to sales. We took the second of our subnets and subnetted that into four additional subnets. We took the first of those and assigned it to marketing. We took the second and subnetted that into four additional subnets. And we took the first of those and assigned it to our WAN link. Another way we can look at the same information is in a table. So here we can see on the left our classful network being broken into four subnets in the second column. We then assign the first of those to sales, as you'll see in the second row. We then take the second of those subnets and break it into four additional subnets. And we assign the first of those to marketing. We take the second of those and subnet it into four additional subnets, taking the first of those and assign it to WAN. In this, if you look at the last column, you can see how neat this actually is, how you can see what subnet is assigned where and which containers are sitting available and unused. And although it looks better graphically for seeing how much of the network is remaining unused, you can see here that we have used under half of our network, where with the standard subnetting, we would have used three-fourths of our network, we have a substantial amount of unused IP addresses remaining for future expansion. This is the way you're going to want to eventually start writing your VLSM subnetting. I would uh, recommend that you attempt to do this as often as possible. It is just not practical to draw boxes or circles. Um, it's a conceptual tool for learning VLSM, but you will eventually need to adjust to writing it out in a table format. This is another Intec 103 whiteboard session. Let's take a look at doing some VLSM subnetting. Here's a network topology and an assigned address and as we covered in the lecture for this module you can determine your user requirements by going through the topology diagram and identifying all of the subnets. You're going to need to work from the largest subnet to the next largest to the next largest down to the smallest. And when you have subnets that are the same size, like these WAN links, you work from the top to the bottom, from the right to the left. So it would be WAN A, WAN B, WAN C, just like you read a book. I think it's helpful to write this information into a table and then use the table and not the diagram, like this. This allows you to very easily write them largest to smallest so that you know what you're working with. So we won't even need this diagram. We'll start with our largest subnet, workstations. Now that we know what we're working with, we have a assigned network of 155.000, which is a class B, and we need to use finger math to determine how many bits I need to leave for host bits to accommodate 300 workstations. So we would count on our fingers 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. We would end up with nine fingers. Two to the nine minus two is 510, which is the best fit container for our workstations. Our next tool will be binary zoom, where we can draw out the assigned network with the classical mask and our newly discovered custom mask, like so. 
Remember, the custom math came from finger math. Finger math took the user requirements of 300 and converted it into bits. And so we knew that we needed to leave nine bits. And you can see that drawn here for you. It's exactly how you'll want to draw it out. At this point, we know the network that we're going to assign to our workstations. It'll be 155000 slash 23. So we're done with our first round of VLSM subnight. And I would assign that address like so in my table and then move on to the next largest. To determine the next network ID that I have to work with, I'll need to use Scratchpad and dial in. So in Scratchpad, I've used the first subnet for workstations. I need to know what the network ID of the second subnet is. So I would put a two in the scratch pad and subtract one, which gives me one. Converting that to binary is still one, and then I would dial it into the subnet bits. Something like this. Once I've done that, I now know my new network ID. So I can go back to finger math, run through my tools, and I'm back to my finger math because my new network ID is this, and my new user requirements is that. Remember, those are the prerequisites for subnetting. So I'm now ready to use finger math to find a best fit container for my 200 laptops. So I would count on my fingers again, 2, 4, 8, 16. I would come up with eight fingers in the air representing the eight bits that need to remain in the host section for 254 usable hosts to accommodate my laptops. Then I would do a binary zoom, drawing out the slash 23, which was from my new assigned network. and then the custom mask, which came from my finger math and the user requirements. Now that I've done this, I know what my network ID is for laptops. I simply have to take my result of binary zoom there and package it up. It would be 155.0.2.0 slash 24. And then I'm ready to go to Scratchpad and dial in to find the next subnet that I have available. And so let me scrunch this up a little bit. So make some room here. So I would dial in my new assigned number. Again, I'm looking for the second subnet because I've already used the first. Right. And I would dial that one in to that position where it used to be a zero there. And it would generate a new network ID, which I can use in combination with my host requirements of 100 phones. So now I have everything I need as prerequisites. I can start back with finger math. So I would do my finger math and I would end up with seven host bits that I need to accommodate the 100 phones. That I would go ahead and do a binary zoom again and I would, of course, binary zoom the slash 24, which is the network that I was um, starting with. And then the finger math tells me that I need seven host bits. So I would be moving that over to a slash 25. At this point, I can now type in the network address that will be assigned to the phones. It's right there in binary. I just have to package it up into decimal. It's 155.030 slash 25. And then I would move on to the point of sale terminals. So I would use Scratchpad to find the second subnet, dialing in a one in the subnet bit position between 24 and 25. And that would give me my new network ID of 155.03.128.25. And I know that I have 18 point of sale terminals, so I could go ahead and move on to finger math and doing finger math, I could determine that I need to leave five 
host bits to accommodate the point of sale terminals. I'll stop there and you can do the rest on your own. You just keep repeating this formula over and over. Just go through these steps in this repetitious order as I've demonstrated here. And you can successfully, working largest to smallest, top to bottom, left to right, you can subnet VLSM any size network.